I intend to discuss the idea that the presence of dogs spoils everything, but I have an important qualification to make, first of all. If you are the type of person who is totally besotted, head over heels in love with dogs, then the arrival of a canine will make your day. When a dog shows up, you will be thrilled. You will drop everything, ignore your family and friends, and concentrate fully and solely on the dog. The presence of the dog will multiply your happiness and joie de vivre by an immeasurable amount. Any conversation you may have been having with humans will be forgotten and you will have a conversation with the dog instead, asking it about what it has done today, asking it if it is a good boy and if it wants a treat. Whether or not you are this kind of person, it is a fact that as soon as a dog is introduced into a human setting, it changes the dynamic of that setting. Things do not go on as before. It is now a space with a dog in it, and the dog now takes center stage. If you love dogs, then it takes center stage in the sense that you want to direct your attention to the dog. Your behavior changes to accommodate the dog. On the other hand, if you hate dogs or are frightened by them or are allergic to them, your behavior also changes. You become watchful, alert, and fearful. You may choose to stop what you are doing or to move to a place of safety. Your behavior changes to accommodate the dog. The presence of the dog has changed things. Parents behave in different ways. Some become more watchful, making sure that their children are safe and don't go too near the dog. Other parents will encourage their children to approach the dog, asking the owner if the dog is friendly or asking if the children can stroke it. The important point is that as soon as a dog is introduced anywhere, beach, park, cafe, or wherever, that space stops being a human space and becomes a dog space with the humans making allowances for the presence of the dog. The natural rhythm of human activity and human interaction is altered. The fun stops. As the charity Dogs Trust points out, as adults, it is our responsibility to keep our young people safe by teaching them how to behave safely around dogs. This recognizes that dogs are dangerous, but it also implicitly recognizes that the presence of dogs changes the behavior of humans. Children have to behave in certain ways around dogs to keep themselves safe. The presence of the dog determines the behavior of the children. Blue Cross for Pets makes the observation that children should learn to behave carefully around a dog and to adapt their temperament to the dog, not the other way around. This type of advice would never need to be given if these same organizations would stop encouraging their members and followers to take dogs everywhere where children are to be found. The advice would also be unnecessary if such organizations would stop providing confusing, mixed messages about dogs to children. Children are told that dogs are friendly, supportive, and protective, but also that they have to behave carefully around dogs, otherwise they may be attacked. If children got the one message that dogs are dangerous, then they would avoid them just as they avoid all other dangerous animals. I have produced a number of videos looking at the harm caused to children by dogs and how children are expected to change and limit their behavior to accommodate dogs. I looked at the belief that dogs are equal to children in my videos, Your Dog Is Not Your Son, Daughter, Boy or Girl, 
dogs are not comparable to children, and pro-dog equals anti-child. My videos, dog nearly rips child's face off, adults carry on as if nothing happened, and Bridger Walker is a hero, but where is the outrage? Looked at the casual disregard for the safety of children around dogs. Keeping a dog is a hobby, like many thousands of other activities, but it is a hobby like no other. It is the only hobby that demands society changes to allow them to practice their hobby. It is the only hobby in which the pursuit of the hobby takes precedence over all other human activity. It is the only dangerous hobby that insists in bringing the danger to the public and expecting the public to keep themselves safe. There are a number of hobbies that involve danger to self and others, but the participants are expected to take responsibility to ensure safety. Imagine a crossbow enthusiast bringing their weapon to a public park or a busy beach, then expecting the public to stay out of the way of the bolts. Imagine a swordsmith bringing his forge into a cafe or restaurant and expecting the public to adjust their behaving to suit his hobby. Both of these examples would be seen as ridiculous and outrageous, but that's what dog owners do every day of the week. They impose their dangerous, smelly, and irritating hobby onto us and expect us not only to accommodate them, but to adjust our behavior to suit their interest. Many dog lovers watching this video will think that their dog has never been aggressive. One obvious answer to that is not yet. But dogs don't need to attack you to spoil your fun. Dogs are noisy. Imagine someone brought their trombone into a cafe and started playing it without asking permission. It would annoy people. Barking annoys people, but dog barking in public places is so common that few people complain. The smell of dog does not fit in well with the enjoyment of food, nor does the staring, invasion of personal space, or begging. See my videos, Why We Hate Dogs and Dog Culture, Give and Let Live, and They Expect Us to Put Up With This. Whether your dog is aggressive or not, its mere presence impacts on human freedom. There is a website called Quora, in which people pose questions which are then answered by other readers. A question area that has come up several times over the years is what to do when you get attacked by a dog when you are cycling. Dogs will get involved in every form of human leisure activity, and their involvement means that the cycling or running or whatever moves from being a human leisure activity to a dog-based activity. I have looked at scores of answers about the cycling problem on Quora and elsewhere, and there is no definitive answer. Some advise trying to outdistance the dog. Others say that is impossible with a determined dog. Others say stop and stare it down, while others tell you to avoid eye contact. There are lots of suggestions which indicate that it is a common problem. One person answered with the suggestion that you carry some stones in your cycling jacket and throw them behind the dog to distract it. He was at pains to point out that you don't throw stones at dogs because that would be cruel. 
This apologetic approach is common among people who dare to criticize dogs. It's time we stopped apologizing. Just in case dog lovers resort to one of their favorite responses and claim that dogs never annoy people, here is a YouTube video that shows quite clearly that they do. It is time that we started to treat dog keepers by the same standards that we treat other animal hobbyists. No one else with an animal-based hobby feels entitled to bring their hobby animal into human places. And if they did, I do not know of any other animal that is as intrusive as a dog. When we, as a society, start to ask why dog keepers get special privileges denied other hobbyists, then we can start to move towards a future that is dog-free.